Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Silla Summit 2022. I am Bhagwan Kumadi, who is the founder of uh, Quantica Computer Cover. It's the first uh, startup in company in India which is building the quantum computer emulator. So I personally started uh, working on Rust uh, six uh, years back and um, I was interested to see how Rust is different from C and C++. And I started learning Rust and um, today I'm going to talk about object relationship mapping and query building in Rust and how Rust can be used with Scylla DB. So this is just a brief introduction about me. I'm the founder and CEO of the company. It's the first quantum computing startup in India building quantum computer in simulator. So I, have, I write blogs on Rust, Golang, Golang and Python. I'm a TEDx speaker and I'm also a member of Forbes Technology Council. So it's to start off agenda, why Rust? Why Rust is so popular and uh, how do you do object relationship mapping with Rust and query building in Rust and web services and specifically with SillaDB, right? How do you go about doing the OR with Rust? So let's start off with why Rust? I think everybody is familiar with system programming languages like C, C++, which are very close to the OS, right? If you look at uh, the system programming languages, like you all go back to the old, uh, what you call OS level language, languages, C was very close. And that's why everybody thought C will be uh, really fast. Right? Similarly, C++. So then came uh, Rust, which is also very close to C, C++, and also has a blazing, blazing performance. And if you look at the, uh, the way the threads are implemented, like in Unix or even Linux, right? Uh, they're, they're very close to how C has implemented. So we can implement threads in C, C++. Similarly, in Rust, you have thread safety. And the good news in Rust is there are no segmentation faults. That's the great news in Rust. So a little bit of history, what happened, uh, how it evolved. Right? If you go about 2009, Right. Uh, we had various companies looking at like Samsung and Motorola and uh, my, uh, the Mozilla Firefox. Right? And uh, around 2009, right, uh, 2009, like Mozilla and Samsung, they started developing Rust language. And around 2013, right, they came up with uh, like experimental web browser layout engine, like Servo. And 2015, you have the first version, stable version. Uh, from Rust around 2015. So let us let us look at some of the features. I think everybody is familiar with various languages in programming, right? It's specific to here, the ownership system, strong type system, strong macros. Everybody remembers the macros in C, C++. Integration with other languages and implicit numerical conversions. And good news is it's open source licensed. Now let's look at the advanced features, right? Uh, the cost abstraction is zero. And you have uh, enum, which is almost like the algebraic data types, right? You have pattern ma matching, uh, what you call uh, constructs, which can be used to identify the patterns within strings or within data. And you can also have generics using traits. I think everybody is familiar with generics, especially in Java, right? It became really popular where you want to have a list of strings, right? Or array, array of strings or uh, collections with specific type. Okay? Good news is that it's, it's safe when you do the memory management. There are no segmentation defaults. Everybody remembers back in old days, C, C++, there's something going wrong, you see immediately a code dump, segmentation default, right? And also, uh, there's no garbage collection. Like in Java, you have Java garbage collection, there's no garbage collection. And now the next question which pops up in your mind, right? How do you go about using Rust? So you have a compiler called Rust-C and you have Cargo, right? Which is a package manager. And you have Iron and you have Servo, which is a browser and you have Piston. And what is the uh, development environment? You have Visual Studio environment, which has a plugin for Rust. You have Emacs, where you can have Flycheck for Rust or Rust mode or Racer or Vim, like a Racer and Rust.vim. You can use one of them to develop. I started off starting with uh, a textpad and started uh, compiling it in command line and learning it. 
right? and slowly then started using the Emacs and Vim and then started working on Rust. There are other great features of Rust if you want to experiment and try more from the language point of view. It has closures, it has concurrency, you can have comments right, for documentation, it ha it's a high, you have macros which are hygienic, and you have crates and modules. Right? That's it. I think everybody is familiar with the modules. Crates is one level above uh, modules. Like in Java, you're getting that uh, packages and bundles, right? That's a new, new features. Now let's look at specific to Scylla DB. Right? Everybody knows we want to access a database, you need a driver, right? So similarly, you have a Rust driver, right? And the uh, UID package gives, provides the UID. Why do you need the UID? The identifier where you can have unique IDs which are being created, right? Tokyo, again, it provides the async runtime to execute database queries, right? And then Scylla, which has the Scylla or Cassandra driver specific to the Rust language. Chrono, package for working with time. Especially when you're doing the queries with database, you want to know how long does it take, right? And you want to have start time, end time, and use the time. Sometimes even to have a timestamp into the database. The, there are uh, load balancing policies right within the Scylla DB Rust driver. You can have round robin, you have DC aware round robin, token aware round robin, and token aware DC aware ro round robin. Right, three types. The next uh, thing which is interesting about Rust uh, object relation mapping, is specific to Scylla DB, is automatic mapping tables to Rust constants. Like in Java, if you remember, if you have worked on Hibernate or uh, uh, JPA, right? Uh, you, you see that there are relation tables and there are objects, Java objects, pojos, and you map them using XML file, right? Or within the within the uh, Java file, you have Annotation, annotations within the Java Pojo. Similar to that, you can do an automatic map mapping tables to Rust constructs. You can have compile time check queries using Scylla ORM macros. Plugin derived macro to generate business, business logic, Scylla ORM macro. So there are some code generators where given the mapping between the tables and the for Java, right? You can generate the code required, right? and use it for applying business logic and business rules. Similarly, you have macros, and you have automatic JSON mapping, and all queries are executed as prepared statement, right? This one thing which is good, that it's, they're all prepared statements, hence performance is good, like in Java. And you have support for materialized views. I think if you, old days, right, um, Oracle used to have the materialized views where it's almost like caching, a, caching, uh, a table with a set of data, right? And it's almost like a snapshot or a view at that point, at the, at the time it was very popular to improve the performance just with Oracle database at that time, right? Now, that comes within Rust ORM where you can have a materialized view where in between, right, the language and the database, <coughs> within the ORM you have the materialized views. Now let's look at the query building. I think everybody is familiar so with the Scylla DB, you want to do multiple queries, select multiple, select unique, select unique expect, unique, select unique expect with count as entity type or the cursor type. So if you go back to the old days, uh, the cursor is very popular in SQL. And also in Java, you have a cursor where you can get the query and traverse through the records. And for each record, you have different columns and values. Now, what are the modules within Scylla DB and the Rust ORM? Right? Capitalizing, Environment Property Reader, Metalized View, Query Metadata, Query Transform, Runtime, and Table Metadata. So, like uh, we talked about the mapping, right? The table metadata may, uh, keeps the information saying that this is the Rust struct and this is what the data, which data table it's going to access, right? Query Metadata is about the SQL query, are you going to do a select, or are you going to do a, what you call a, a group by, or you want to update uh, the table like CRUD, right? The create, read, update, delete, or you want to delete, right? You want to read the data, you want to create a, create a table. So the query metadata has information. The query transform, transform is about transforming a query to get executed okay. within Rust. And what are the st structs within Scylla DB? 
like I was mentioning, right, there are structs which are which are easily mappable to the database. So you have materialized view. One of the popular thing you know, in terms of performance is the materialized view, right? You have materialized view from DB. You have query metadata, column in query, right? Query part, parameterized column type, right? Query metadata, metadata specific to query metadata, right? Query transform count. Query transform delete multiple, query transform delete unique, query transform insert, query transform query, query entity vector, right? Query entity vector result, and query result unique row, right? Query result unique row expect, query transform, right? And query transform select multiple, query transform select unique, query transform select expect, and query transform truncate. You have table name for table metadata, you have table column in table, table metadata, and query transform update. So now that we looked at the Scylla ORM and the Rust driver, why is Scylla DB so popular? We have great features in Scylla DB for clustering, you can have distributed uh, databases. Yeah, it, is, it has features for high availability, failover, data replication, and also sharding, right? Like in NoSQL, you have the sharding where you can have power partitioning based on uh, category, based on various uh, indexes. You can have sharding done across the uh, NoSQL database. And the ORM mapping, right? How do you go about doing the mapping? So we uh, add a build dependency. You create a build.rs file or implement a transformer or a trait or use default transformer and you call the Scylla ORM table to start generate and you build the project right? and automatically the code gets generated. Now we have been talking about great things about Rust, great things about Scylla DB, great things about the driver. So immediately many of my uh, what do you call uh, audience or customers ask this question, what are the problems with Scylla DB? Right? What, are the, what are the problems with Scylla ORM? So if you look at the current, uh, what you call the problem which we are facing is the missing SQL collection types. Like you have SQL, SQL is the popular language with Scylla, right? Then the SQL collection types are missing related to lists, sets, maps, and tuples. And to take a step back, what are the other products within Scylla? If Scylla is open source, Scylla has managers, Scylla has drivers, Scylla has Enterprise products, Scylla Enterprise, Scylla Monitoring, Scylla Alternator, Scylla Cloud, Scylla Operator. Now, the other question which immediately comes into your mind saying that, okay, it has been great looking at various features. What is next within Scylla DB? What's next with the rest of it? Right? Like on the cloud, we talk about the elasticity, right? We relate to computing power processing. Scylla DB is looking at providing elasticity. And also look at the storage, right? Tired storage, plugin storage. And you have a need to look at the data over time and also data over the space. And I left uh, a blank for a couple of new features which are coming in the next releases. But basically, Scylla DB will be a new, uh, what you call a cloud based database, which has capability to provide compute, to provide processing, to provide storage, and also security and the capabilities which are available with ORM and also no skill database. And surely it is, you can have the clustering, scalability, failover, right, data replication, uh, and also having distributed storage, which, which is very necessary when you get into the, what you call latest microservices based architecture. Sharding also is getting popular. Like if you look at the functional partitioning, right, functional way, way of say, scaling the, scaling the, what you call uh, architecture, is to functionally have sharding. And sharding looks at partitioning the database based on the functionality, based on categories, based on a specific function, right? Like a department, for example. And use the, the sharding to distribute the data across various partitions and access the data which is what is required for a specific department and access will be faster. So thank you all and uh, you can stay in touch and I have given my Twitter uh, account at Bhagu and that's my nickname and my email address bhagwanart at gmail.com.